Hi folks, in this chapter we are going to talk about auction theory. Uh, we already talked about uh, uh, first price auction as an application in uh, Bayesian games. Um, so we are going to uh, basically dive into a bit more detail of auction theory. So here, let me give you some introduction. Uh, auction is actually highly used a method of transaction. Um, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, most of the times treasury bills are, are sold through auctions, foreign exchange, mineral rights, uh, airway uh, spectrum rights, uh, artwork like uh, uh, you know uh, expensive paintings, antiques, and uh, and, and cars, houses, uh, especially in in the United States, in Canada, uh, and maybe in some some parts of Europe. Uh, the house owners are usually um, uh, receive uh, several offers, bids from uh, potential buyers, and then uh, they they sell the house to the highest bid uh, bidder. I'm sorry. Uh, the government contracts, army contracts, or military contracts are are most of the times are 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 are, are sold through auctions. And think about eBay. Uh, basically almost everything is sold through auctions. So um, there are different auction methods. So I'm going to uh, sort of divide them into uh, uh, two uh, classes, open bid auctions versus sealed bid auctions. Um, in the open bid auctions, uh, I, I divide them into two categories uh, briefly. Uh, ascending bid, or I mean, these are sort of not, I'm, I'm not uh, separating them into two classes. It's just two examples in this category. Ascending, ascending bid auction, or uh, mostly known as English auction. What happens, the price uh, starts from some uh, reservation price or some opening bid, and then the bidders increase, uh, raise the price. And, and the, uh, you know, a bidder raises his hand and, and makes a bid and all the bids are observable. Well, what happens is that uh, the, the bidding process continues until only one guy remains. Um, and he basically uh, is announced as the uh, uh, winner and he pays uh, his uh, uh, bid, uh, last bid. Well, in the descending uh, bid auction, uh, the price actually starts from a high level and then decreases. Whoever accepts uh, the bid for the very first time uh, wins the object and, and pays his bid. All right, uh, so it's called a Dutch auction. Um, also, there are a bunch of other examples and mostly, uh, you know, I mean, for example, the ascending bid auction or the English auction are mostly used in, for example, uh, antiques artwork sales. Uh, Dutch auction, uh, I'm not uh, very familiar about it. Um, well, the sealed bid auctions are also uh, highly used auction methods. Uh, the very f famous one is the first price auction. So here it is sealed bid auction because everybody simultaneously make their bid. They're, I mean, here these are uh, sequential in a sense, all right? And everybody can observe the bids of the others. Here, however, uh, everything is simultaneous and everybody uh, uh, bids uh, make, and sort of make his or her bids uh, without knowing the others. So in the first price auction, the winner is the uh, bidder who makes the highest bid and he pays his price, all right, or he pays his bid. And the second price auction, also known as Vickery auction, Again, the winner is the highest bidder. I mean, the person who makes the highest bid wins the auction. However, he doesn't pay, the, pay his bid. He pays the highest losing bid or uh, the second highest bid, okay? Uh, the third price auction, well, again, very similar to the second price auction. Uh, the winner is the highest bidder. Um, and the bidder, uh, the winner actually pays the third highest bid, okay? And then all pay auction. Uh, well, again, the winner is the uh, bidder who makes the highest bid. However, everybody pays his or her own bid, all right? So even if you lose the auction, you have to make uh, a payment, 
whatever you bid. All right, so it's sort of sort of all pay auction is a bit more scary than, for example, the first price auction or second or third price auction because you pay only if you win in these auctions. But in the all pay auction, as the name suggests, everybody pays regardless you win or not. Okay, we can think of auctions as allocation mechanisms with two main ingredients: an allocation rule and a payment rule. So what is an allocation rule? It basically is the rule which determines who is going to be the winner. In almost all auctions, the winners uh, are the bidder who makes the highest bid, right? Uh, I mean, remember the first price, second price, third price, all, you know, British or English auction, Dutch auction, uh, all pay auction. So there, uh, the winners are always the uh, highest bidder. But this is not always the case. For example, in uh, Chinese auction, uh, each bidder has a, a probability of winning. So if you make a bid BI, your probability of, of, of winning, given that you made the bid BI, is equal to BI divided by B1 plus B2 all the way up to BN, assuming that there are N bidders, and these are the uh, so the summation of the bids of uh, everybody else, including you. So it's sort of the relative ratio of your bid determines your likelihood of winning the object. All right. So uh, it's not, I mean, there are some auctions where the winners are determined stochastically, not deterministically. Um, well, the second rule is the payment rule. So who is need to make a payment and how much? Um, well, if you remember in the first price auction, the winner pays his bid or the highest bid. In the second price auction, uh, the bidder or the winner, I'm sorry, uh, pays the second highest bid. In the third uh, price auction, uh, the winner uh, pays only the third highest bid. In the all pay auction, for example, all the bidders pay his or her own bid, for instance. So. Uh, the, the different auction mechanisms have different payment rules. But nevertheless, you, you know, whenever you think of a, a, an auction, you have to be clear about two things. Allocation rule, who gets the object, and a payment rule, who pays how much, okay? Um, well, by the way, I am going to give the formal model in the next episode, but uh, in, in, in this chapter, we talk about auctions where there's only one single object that is auctioned, all right? So we're not auctioning multiple objects at the same time, we're auctioning only one item at a time. So, uh, well, we can also uh, sort of categorize auctions in terms of valuations for the bidders. And uh, we call auctions as private value auctions or common value auctions. So what is private value auction? Well, simple, each bidder knows only his or her own valuation and uncertain about the other bidder's valuations. This is usually the case in, for example, artwork, antiques, where, uh, you know, the value of the object is, is, is highly subjective. The common value auction, well, these are usually the case where the value of the object is highly uh, uh, objective, not subjective, as in the private value auction. So in the common value auction, the actual real value of the object is the same for everybody. For example, oil fields auctions, all right? So there is a, a region where the government is going to uh, sell, and you know the firms who are interested in extracting oil from this field are interested in participating to this auction. So therefore, the value of this land, this territory, depends, of, depends on how much oil that they can extract. So the technology is the same for almost everybody. The labor cost, everything is almost the same. So therefore, the valuation uh, should be the same. I mean, roughly speaking. Uh, company takeovers, for example. Again, the worth of the company is, is, is the same for everybody, and so therefore, uh, again, these are common value auctions. Well, obviously, um, some frameworks or some environments can fall into uh, both of those categories, all right? The, the object is, for example, housing or car. 
uh, the, the value of the object could be a bit subjective, uh, but it's also, uh, you know, uh, there's also sort of some, some sort of objective uh, part of it, right? I mean, if it is a housing, and if it is Toronto downtown, for example, I mean, you know that, uh, I mean, the, the house is not going to be sold, say, 100K, uh, because this is not the price in Toronto downtown. So uh, the, the, there is not only some subjective part, but also an objective part of the valuation. But nevertheless, for simplifications, almost all our analysis, uh, theoretical analysis, lie uh, e either on this category, private value auctions, or this category. In this chapter, I'm not going to talk about common value auctions because they are highly complicated uh, animals uh, and it requires a bit more advanced uh, skills. And so we're going to basically focus, mean, uh, not mainly, but completely on private value auctions. Again, I'm going to talk about the details of our model in the next episode. Um, but before going there, I would like to make a, sort of a, a remark. And later I'm going to uh, sort of open that uh, up, uh, this, this quote and quote uh, uh, statement, strategically equivalence. So English auction, remember, ascending auction, ascending bid auction or English auction is strategically equivalent to second price auction. So the English auction is actually open bid auction and the second price auction is sealed bid auction, uh, right? I mean, here you, nobody can see the other's bid, here everybody can see the other's bid, uh, but nevertheless they're strategically equivalent. Uh, but code and code, uh, I, 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 I'm going to leave this strategically equivalence uh, vague here at this moment, but later I'm going to talk about it uh, a bit more uh, detail. And similarly, Dutch auction is strategically equivalent to first price auction. Okay?